Is this the most powerful LS3 intake manifold ever made? Well, maybe not, but it is adjustable, both for runner length and plenum volume. So let's find out what happens when we adjust each one. If nothing else, a dual plenum manifold looks amazing. Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holder. Yes, as always, welcome to the channel. Today we're talking about the best LS intake manifold ever made. And what do I mean by that? Well, we've got an intake manifold that is dual plenum, dual throttle body, adjustable runner length, and adjustable plenum volume. The question is, what happens when you adjust all that stuff? Well, Let's find out. Okay, guys, let's jump right in. We're going to take a look at the Super Richie Dual Plenum Adjustable Intake Manifold, and it was adjustable both for runner length, which is good. We see a big change in power by doing that, and also by plenum volume. I get a lot of questions. Hey, Richard, what happens if we increase the plenum volume or decrease it? And I'm going to show you exactly what happened when we did this, because this manifold, this dual plenum manifold, lended itself to that. I'm going to show you exactly what happened on the power curve. And let's get into our test motor, and we originally ran it with a fast LSXR intake manifold and 102 millimeter throttle body, but the motor itself was a stroker motor. It was a Darton sleeved LS6 aluminum block, and we did that so that we could increase the displacement. Now, the sleeves allowed us to do two things. They allowed us to go a, both a bigger bore and a longer stroke because the sleeves were both bigger and thicker and then they were also longer. So it allowed us to have stability of the combination with the longer stroke. Using the sleeved block, we were able to run a or combine a 4185 bore with a 4250 stroke crank. We had a forged stroker crank, forged rods, forged pistons. And then we had a fairly high compression because we had, uh, you know, lots of displacement, uh, 12 and a quarter to one. We had a big Brian Tooley Racing. This was actually an LS7 cam that was originally designed to be a 650, 630 lift, 247, 258, and 112 degree plus three lobe separation angle. And we ran this. This was a, we had in installed um, Airflow Research LS3 heads on this. And so we ran at the LS3 rockers and not the LS7 rockers. We ran, this had a Mylodon oil pan and a remote filter setup. We had inch and seven eighths American Racing headers. The, the timing here, I don't know why it's showing 25. Uh, it was 29 degrees. Um, Lucas Oil, we had the push rods and stuff. And so you can see, we ran this thing, again, first, so long tube headers. It was a big stroker motor, good size camshaft, lots of head flow. And it actually did very well. So run with the, originally with the fast LSXR intake manifold. This thing produced 679 horsepower and 635 foot-pounds of torque. Here's what happened, and I'll show you a photo of it when we put the Super Richie adjustable intake manifold on it. Basically, dual plenums, each equipped with a 90 millimeter throttle body, and then you can see we have uh, basically a, a, a two lower flanges with injector bosses, and then what I did was just make standoffs, and then I could insert um, two-inch aluminum tubes and then run that up to the common plenum. The common plenum, I'll show you a photo here, has rate bell mouth radius entries uh, inside the plenum, and it has standoffs sticking out of the bottom of the plenum. And again, uh, they're swedged open so that I can slip fit a bunch of tubes, and then we could tape them so that they're all in place. And you can see we, we ran um, brackets and spacers and stuff. The other thing, if you look at the back side of the plenum, we have openings in the backside that allow us to run a connection pipe between the two plenums. So we could run them individually and separate, and then we can also join them together. And what that does is change the plenum volume. I'm going to show you what happens when we do exactly that. But our first test is comparing uh, the Super Richie intake manifold with 16 and a half inch runner lengths and... Um, with no connector connecting the two pieces. So we see we have, this is, and I'll go ahead and label them. The one that's making more power is the individual runner uh, or, or dual plenum intake manifold. It made more than the fast. It made a little bit more on the peak, 688 foot pounds of or 688 horsepower. 
and peak torque was up a little bit 648 foot pounds of torque but notice here down down in the 3000 3500 4000 rpm range the longer runner intake manifold made quite a bit more power so it managed to at least keep pace and actually make a little bit more peak power than the fast did made made more peak torque but made a lot more power down low than the fast did. So now let's take a look and see what happened when we started changing runner lengths and started adjusting plenum volume. Now they've illustrated the merits of the design of the dual plenum compared to something like the fast. Let's take a look and see what happens when we start adjusting things. So this was our power combination with the 16 and a half inch runner length. And here's what happened when we changed it over to, dropped it down to 10 and a half inches. And again, neither one of these had the connectors joined, just two individual plenums not connected. Um, and you can see, I'll go ahead and label these, but you can see what happens is when we shorten the runner length, two things happen. One, we picked up more power. So now the combination, now the peak power is over 700 horsepower, 704 horsepower, but we had lost power from 5,400 RPM all the way down. So we, and down here, we had lost as much as 50 foot pounds of torque down here at 38, 37 and 3,800, we're looking at 553 versus 606. So it's quite a bit of a change in torque changing the runner length. And this is what normally happens when you see this an awful lot when we compare all different types of manifolds. Recently, when we ran the 5.3, the fast manifold versus the short runner, Brian Tooley Racing. We saw it on the Coyote video that I did with the Boss manifold versus the factory Gen 1 Coyote. We see a big change, and this is what happens. When you try to optimize power production at a higher engine speed, what happens is you sacrifice power down low. So this is going to happen no matter what we do, and we'll see this subsequently when we go to an even shorter runner length. So we can take a look at that. We ran... This is a seven and a half inch or seven and a quarter inch runner length, and it did indeed make more power. It made 722 horsepower, but as you can see, basically lost power uh, through the rest of the curve. And this always happens. <laughs> Short runners tend to lose power down low, and they tend to optimize power production higher in the RPM range, in this case, all the way out at 7,000 RPM. So now that we've taken a look at what happens when we're changing runner length, this is pretty normal. Let's find out what happens when we have when we run this thing with the divider and then or, or with the connection and without the connection, so we can see effectively a change in plenum volume. Now that we take a look at what happens when we adjust the runner length on our dual plenum Super Richie adjustable intake manifold, let's do some adjustment on the plenum volume. And the way that we do that on this particular combination is we have two individual plenums and then obviously adjustable runners. But on the back side of those, we have openings just like we would for a throttle body. But this allows, I'll show you a photo here, of this allows me to connect these two together using a series of tubes and, and um, silicone couplers. And what we do is run it with those and without those. And when you join those two together, what you're doing is effectively increasing the plenum volume. So let's see what happens. What do you guys think before we get going? What do you guys think is going to happen? Is it going to change the power? Is it going to make more peak power? Is it going to make more mid-range power? What is it going to do when we, right now, this is our combination with no connector. So two just individual plenums, let me know in the comments before we get going, what do you think it's going to do when we join them together and have more plenum volume? And I'll go ahead <laughs> and show you. But this is our combination uh, with just two individual plenums, you know, 705 horsepower, 638 foot pounds of torque. And here's the change in the power curve when we connected them together. Same runner length, none of that changed. You can see what happens here is very interesting. There's basically no change um, at the for peak torque or peak horsepower. In fact, there's really no change, very, very minor change. But above 4,800 or so, there's no change. So what happens is when we connect the plenums together, we see a dramatic change in what I would call low speed power, 3,000 to 4,000 RPM. It's a little bit between four and 46 or 4,700 RPM. But by joining the plenums together, we dramatically dropped low speed torque from 3,000 to 3,500 in this case. But from 3,500 on up to 41 or 4,200, we increased torque. And then we saw, and then we dropped torque again just a little bit. 
and then it made no change after that. Then everything was okay. So the plenum volume had very, very little effect on the peak power and peak torque, but it had a decided effect down low. And we saw the same thing. If you take a look at the video that I have up where we tested the 4.6 liter two valve factory truck intake manifold, they had this kind of trickery going on. Basically, they had a little blade, they had a divider between two plenums and they're opening and closing that. And what they did, and very wisely so, is what you would wanna do is have no connection here. We would not want to have the plenums connected here at 3000 and below. And then you would want to connect them at 3500 RPM and leave them connected up to 4100 or 4150 and then unconnect them again and then just leave it like that. So if you could, if you could do this trickery, basically what you'd have, you'd have this big torque bump. In fact, the gain here went from 547 foot-pounds to 580 foot-pounds. So it was a big jump, but also down below that by having it connected and not having it adjust electronically adjustable, we lost a bunch of torque. So it went from 507 foot-pounds down to 468 foot-pounds. So about four, lost about 40 foot-pounds, gained another 40 foot-pounds. You see, it's just jumping back and forth. And this is what happens when you change plenum volume. And so when I get comments from people that are saying, oh yeah, you need more plenum volume for more peak power. In the testing that I've done so far, and it includes a lot of it, I never see a change in power, including when we went to the giant keglodon, like shark looking plenum volume, when we changed the plenum volume to, you know, I don't know what a beer keg is, but it's a lot. <laughs> and we didn't really change it very much. You can see what happens here with the Super Richie dual plenum intake manifold connected versus not connected. And then also what happened when we changed the runner length. So now everybody knows how to make their own intake manifold. I'm Richard Holder. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. But hey, it's a 700 plus horsepower Stroker LS. I'll keep testing.